Hey, what's up? It's Christine Horn. Welcome back to another episode of Booking Magnet Magic. Oh, I'm so happy to have you here. This series is so juicy. Today, I am bringing you Arisha Connor. She's an amazing actress based out of South Carolina and LA because she's been just all over the place these days. And, you know, I have to say she holds a very special place in my heart because she was one of my clients. She was one of my early acting clients when I first started my company in Los Angeles. And she took like every class I had available. And then we had a chance to work with each other for about six months in my private mentorship. And when I tell you, I got to just watch this woman bloom. She used to be a school teacher, so she's been pouring into the lives of children for so many years, and it's an honor to be able to watch her live her dreams on a whole new level now. Recently, you've seen her in shows like Swagger on Apple Plus. Um, you've seen her in Dope Sick opposite Michael Keaton on Hulu. And at the time of this recording, she's also recurring on the new Apple Plus TV show with Samuel Jackson about the last days of Ptolemy Gray. Had to just get all the titles. She's working so much. I had to just get all the titles together. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this interview with the talented Arisha Connor. Arisha! By now, everyone who watches this, when they hear me singing names, it, it, I think it's, it's just become a thing now, singing names. Welcome! Thank you for saying yes. Oh, no, thank you for even asking me. I'm, it's my pleasure. My pleasure. Hey. Absolute pleasure. Y'all, Arisha and I go way back, way back. And it's been honestly, honest, a beautiful journey in watching, watching you blossom and flourish in this industry. Um, it really has. Um, Arisha used to be a client of mine and she's one of those people who it was so fun to mentor because you ate, you just ate it up. You came for what you needed, you ate it up, you digested it, you made it your own and you, you're seeing the fruits of that labor. And I'm so, I just, first of all, I'm just so proud of you. I really, really am. I am, I'm so proud of you. I know your hubby's proud of, proud of you too. I know he's seen, seen the journey. The yeah. whole time, the whole yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you even get started? How did you get the, the the acting bug? What was that? Tell me that story. Well, um, growing up, I always wanted to be a singer, you mm -hmm. know? Um, so I've always been a performer, you know, like I was in pageants and always on the stage. My dad had a pageant. I was always on the stage. When I went to college, I took an acting class, but I still wanted to be a singer, you know? Um, and then when I, I went to two colleges, <laughs> when I was at my second one at Claflin University, I was in a play, Mama, I Want to Sing. And it was fun. It was such a fun experience because I had seen it off Broadway in New York, but I still wanted to sing. So I was <laughs> a wedding singer for about 13 years and we were a show band and it was really bad on my knees. So I had to stop doing that. And I was teaching and working and I had joined our faculty choir in my school district. And the director of the choir worked with our local theater. And he was like, hey, we're doing a show. I want you to come and audition. I was like, okay, cool. I'll come and audition. And I auditioned for that show. It was Smokey Joe's Cafe. And I fell in love. I mean, that was, that was the first time that I got bit by the acting bug because we had sold out shows every night. And I remember the last night I was just on stage boohoo crying, like wondering what is next? Because I, I loved the camaraderie. Um, yeah. I loved the. it just felt like each one of the songs was its own story. So telling those stories and just being on stage, I ate it up. I loved it. And there was a young lady who was in that production who was a part of another local production company, Wild Productions. And she said, hey, we're doing a play you know, you should come and audition. I was like, okay. So I auditioned and I was at an understudy, which, you know, was cool. You know, I was, you know, I hadn't taken any classes or anything except for some classes that I took when I was in college. But the night that I um, did my show, because I got one show out of three, the night I did my show, uh, they actually filmed that night. And that particular show was distributed on DVD. Oh, wow. Right, by Maverick Movies. And then I was like, Oh, I, I gotta, I gotta get some more of this. I like, gotta more, please, get some more, more of this. Yeah. So it was, I was in my late thirties 
um, when I really got bit by the um, the acting bug. And that's exactly how it started. Because from Wild Productions, that's when I was trying to find, well, what do I need to do? Do I need to get an agent? You know, I, was, I had all these questions. And so I was just, you know, on the internet trying to see what I needed to do next. And I did things out of order because I got a headshot, my first headshot. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to pull it up? Y'all, <laughs> you can't, it's not online anywhere. I think I have it somewhere, but I had this big Afro and my head was tilted to the side. And I was like, you know, that was, that, I didn't know. You don't know what you don't know. But I was just trying to do all the things I saw other people doing because I was like, I've got to have more of this. So that that's how it started. I love that. And I hope that's encouraging to anybody who's watching and listening. Like oftentimes people feel that, is it too late? You know, because I didn't do it. I didn't have the bug when I was, I didn't do it when I was a kid or even when I was 20. You know, I love that. You're like, you know, I, <laughs> it's always been a, a tug, a pull, you know, yeah. and even from, I bet you brought a lot of creativity because what you don't know about Arisha, she, um, you know, spent years teaching. Were you like a fave? I feel like you were, a, you would be my favorite teacher because you would bring creativity to the class. Listen, I think that I, I, like I said, I've always been a performer. So I brought, I did bring that performance to the classroom, but I was a um, trainer in the district for 12 years. I used to train teachers to integrate technology in the classroom and I would do presentations. Now my presentations were always dynamic because when (laughs) I stepped, you know what I'm saying? Because it was like, when I stepped in front of them, it was like I was stepping on stage. Right. But my last two years in education, I was in the classroom and you can best believe I brought all of it in the classroom with me. And I know my, my classroom was the place that all the kids wanted to be. I still keep in contact with my students because I gave them, listen, I had a speaker and a microphone in my class. I was the only teacher on the hall. I did. I, I decorated my door. I did a video that almost went viral, you know, for the first day of school and well, it, it was had over like almost 500,000 views, but, and then I did, um, yeah, I would play chill hop, um, a YouTube channel in my classroom and saying, y'all better do your homework I, to my kids. So I brought it all in there and I gave them everything because I felt like that's what they deserved. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I, I gave it, I gave it to them now. Ooh, I love it. I already like I could tell. Like, I want to be in Mr. Rich's class. Some class is fun. I love that. Um, and now, and now I, the journey is so is so wonderful. And I don't know, I think you knew this, but Mama I Wanna Sing was a play that truly impacted me as a child. Really? Seeing it in New York off Broadway. Yeah. Yeah. And I saw my mother took me for like my birthday. And because we still lived in the Bronx at the time. And I just remember seeing that little brown girl on stage. I was like, I want to do that. I want to do that. So that's so funny. We have that connection. Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw it when Tony Terry was in it. And um, I think Desiree Coleman was in it when I saw it in New York. And it was during, I was in the uh, How Jackson's Town 15 pageant. I was Miss South Carolina. And so we went to, our pageant was at the Apollo Theater. So that whole weekend, you know, we went, we saw a chorus line. I think I fell asleep during that. But I loved Mama, I Want to Sing. And at the end, it was like every, it was like a party. Everybody was singing. And I I enjoyed that immensely. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's such, I love that. That's a nice connection. I didn't know we had. (laughs) You know, you talk about being inspired and, and of course, wanting to get a taste of this. What was it about actors that you saw, like whether it was on TV, on stage and movies, what was it about the ones who like made you lean in? What was it that drew you to them? What what did they exude or what what was it that made them magical to you? For me, it was whenever, my favorite thing to do is watch movies and watch TV. And if I am so pulled into a show that I forget any problems that I have or I'm forgetting what might even be going on in the world for just a little while, that's Mm -hmm. what completely pulls me in. Um, To see someone like you, it's, it's almost like you're seeing someone else's story, but you're forgetting that this is this person or this is that person. And it becomes so much about the story. Like, um, what's, what's the movie? Um, 
the green mile, like the green mile. Like yeah. when you watch that movie, it's like you're pulled away from knowing like this is um, Tom Hanks or this is uh, Michael Clark Duncan. It's just it's just about that story and the telling of that story. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so absolutely. That, that's what draws me in and that's what attracts me to um, actors. When you don't see them you really see the story, like Jamie Foxx and Ray. Ooh. You know, you know that's Jamie Foxx. You know what I'm saying? And you're watching. Oh, it's Jamie Foxx. But then, as you're watching, it's like it's not Jamie Foxx. We're yeah. watching Ray Charles. That's that's who we're seeing. Who else does that? Um, oh God, Jim Carrey when he okay. did the one about the comedian that he used to be on SNL. It's like you know it's Jim Carrey, but but then as you go into the movie, it's it's that it's that person. It's their story. And yeah. I, I I can get lost in a story and it just disconnects me from the world for a minute and draws me in. And that that's what I love. That's the most beautiful thing, that full transformation. And it makes you sad too, like when it's over, it's like, oh, I'm not yeah. in this world anymore. Like yeah. a good book and you get to the last book, ah. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And oh, there's yeah. nothing, there's nothing better than that, especially when you are an artist also. You know, we it's easy for us. We could easily get lost in tech, watching this and watching the back. But then when I forget all about that, and I'm like you said, I am sucked in by the performances and the story. There's nothing like that. Right. Yeah. I think I think that's that's for sure is magical, and I can totally relate to that. You know, I'm gonna switch gears for a second and ask you my Oprah question. <laughs> <laughs> What do you, Arisha, what do you know for sure is your magical superpower? What makes you magical? When you step on the screen, when you step on the stage, what is it that's undeniable that nobody has to tell you about you? I'm, you know, I'm not sure how to answer that question, but I do know that when we had the shutdown, when we had COVID, you know, COVID everything was shut down, it caused me to really go on a journey of myself. You know what I'm saying? And just getting comfortable with the way I look, the way my nose is, the way my lips are, the way my eyes are, and be so comfortable with myself, with makeup, without makeup, hair done, hair not done. And I guess it, what it brings, what I've brought to the screen is my vulnerability because mm -hmm. I'm okay with everything that's right and everything that's wrong with me. Ooh, that's um, juicy. Yeah, yeah, like I, if I have bags under my eyes or, you know, um, my, my face isn't looking right or whatever, I'm okay with that if that's what the story needs. Yeah. I don't, I, I love all the wrong parts of me. Well, there's not wrong, but, you know, and the right parts. And I'm, I'm, I'm all right with being vulnerable and just, just being comfortable with being who I am. And I think that that's important because I think sometimes people feel like um, who they are is not what they want other people to see. And I realize that who I am and just, just truly connecting with who I am and being okay with that, that became my superpower because that's when I started to book some jobs when I was just like, hey, I'm just yeah. going to be me. And I'm not trying to right. figure out what's, what you exactly want. I'm bringing Arisha to the table. Yeah. 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 And I love that too, that because that is vulner vulnerability and I'm the same way. I will, I'm here for the transformation. I'm like you said, if it's, does it serve the story? Does it serve the story I want to tell and bring this character to life? And when you are showing up, I, I call it like showing up, like with your white meat showing, like just <laughs> available, an available vessel, you know, that truly impacts the performance you, you give because you're not trying to hide behind something. Right, right. It allows you to be present. Oh, that's juicy. I love that. <laughs> I do, I do. I've, I've And I know th those of you have been watching and listening to these this series, there's so much goodness in these conversations because, oh, I could I could talk about this stuff forever. You know, a lot of things, you know, we hear about the glitz, the glamour, we hear about a lot of this stuff, but you don't always hear the process behind the, the everybody's work. So this is why this is so fun to me. What job, what paid gig for you, Arisha, proved to you that I'm good at this? 
honestly, it was when I did Dope Sick. Like that was the second job that I had booked. I did Swagger first. But when I did Dope Sick, it was me having conversation with um, like Michael Keaton, right? All, most of my, all my scenes with him and just sitting there and talking to him and then going on set. And it was just like cameras are rolling, but it was just an extension of our conversation. You know what I'm saying? It just felt like it's, it was just Arisha. It was Arisha being in this office. It was Arisha uh, connecting with this person because when I was thinking about him, I was thinking of him as my father because I used to work in my father's office. My father's a dentist. So it was okay. easy for me to make that correlation with him. And, you know, when I, I remember when I, my first day on set, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm here with Michael Keaton. You know what I mean? And then it was like, oh my gosh, I'm here with Michael Keaton. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm here. We, we are here. <laughs> right, right. And to to be there and to get so many encouraging words from everybody there because you know when I first was there I was like oh am I supposed to be here and then it's like yeah I am supposed to be here and then to watch it and see you know I'm holding my I'm I'm doing my thing just being me and just being natural and that was the beauty of the whole the whole thing you know just being a part and carrying that part of the story that he needed giving mm-hmm. him what he needed you know what I'm saying? It's like, like he's uh, nominated for so many awards, SAG Awards coming out. And I feel like I'm part of that because I was giving him what he needed, mm-hmm. you know, for him to tell that great part of the story. And so it was being a part of that whole um, cast, crew, everyone, it really made me feel like, yeah, yeah, Arisha, you, you, you're supposed to be here. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. There's, there's always a gig, you know, you, you could have, I mean, I knew that about you, <laughs> right? For real, for real. I mean, but there's a difference when you, there's always a moment when it clicks for you, which is important because that's also that let, lets you know, you've stepped into a level of confidence mm-hmm. and belonging and worthiness. Right. And it, and now you're just here to do the, your, your good job. You're just here to do your work just like everyone else, you know, we can put bigger names on a pedestal when at the end of the day, they're carrying the same anxiety and stress to do a really good job, just like you. Right. So I love that. I love that. Another part of that real quick, like even with swagger, when I was on swagger, they put no makeup on me. Right. I wore no, I I wore chapstick. That was it. And that, that was a, a stepping stone almost to dope sick because they didn't really, um, put a whole lot of makeup on me. And that just made me feel like, yeah, like this, my uniquely made self, this is, this is what that story needed. So, and I I love that because like actors don't realize that their uniqueness is what's going to propel them to their greatness. It is your uniqueness that is needed. So that those, both of those experiences really um, sealed that deal for my, my brain. (laughs) Oh, I love that. And you're so, it's, you're so true. I was, uh, on a Q and a call for, I have a course called book more TV for those of you who don't know. And we do Q and a calls. (laughs) We do these Q and a calls twice a month. And we had one of our students ask the question about his headshots and he was asking, should he, you know, do, you know, take, get rid of the bags under his eyes. And he had a scar and we pulled up the photo and everybody, myself, the students were like, no, Like your face, what I see, that is memorable. I was like, do not touch it. Like, like maybe that one little scar up there, if you want to take it, but this scar here. And like, I was like, your face is so expressive. And it's just like, you're saying you are going to be booked because of not in spite of how you are showing up. And so it's like, you can, you can fight it and and hate what you see, or you can accept and and love on what you've been gifted with. And no, just like Arisha saying, I'm someone's going to want me just because of me. Right. I love that. Oh, that's a whole word. That's a whole word, y'all. Because okay. you can sit here and try to become the becoming of someone else is an is a never ending battle. Yeah. You know, it's just it's work just not possible. On, yeah, work on becoming you. 
Yes. Loving yes. and accepting you. Like, like I said, when I, I went on a journey of really loving myself and I loved your book, Playing Small. I mean, you, I always mention you because you helped me tap into my mindset. And once I got my mindset to a place where I'm, I was open and ready to really just accept and, and be me, it, it made a world of difference. That mindset made the world of difference for me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so happy to hear that. And it's, it's daily work, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. It's, um, but it's, it's, it impacts our careers more than we realize. Hey, what's up? It's Christine Horn, the booking magnet. I am so excited to invite you to our next event. It is called Booking Magnet Live. It's happening in Atlanta, Georgia on July 15th and 16th, 2022. You're going to spend two days surrounded with actors oh, just like you. Actors who want more, actors who are looking for a safe space, a sanctuary, a safe haven to express themselves, to learn, to grow, and to connect. So I'm excited for you to experience that. Make sure you join us July 15th and 16th. You can click the link below, and I'm so excited to see you there. I want to shift gears a bit and talk a bit about you know, you've been working a lot, which I'm so happy to see and hear. Um, but, you know, we like to keep it real here, you know, and so <laughs> because it's easy for someone to think what's wrong with me. It's been slow for me, you know, these past few months or past few years or I haven't booked anything yet. You know, talk a bit about how you have dealt with the ebbs and flows of the business. Right. Because it can be booking, booking, booking. <laughs> right. You know, how do you, how have you dealt with, you know, with that? And maybe can you share like something that really helps you? You know, for some people it's prayer, for some people it's meditation, for some people it's just taking a break. What does that look like for you when you need to just process? I'll tell you, it, it has been a process because in the beginning, I was hearing so, well, you don't hear no's, you just don't hear anything. Right. And you know it's a no. And there's so many no's. And I was feeling like maybe there's something wrong with me. You know, I was, I had those thoughts of maybe I'm too old. Maybe they don't like the way I'm, I look. Maybe I don't have the Hollywood. You know, I, I was having all those thoughts and it just takes you down into a dark place of you being so insecure about yourself. And that's where I say the mindset really pulled me out of that. When I connected with you and learned about how to turn all those thoughts into more positive thoughts that really helped me. And so now, I mean, I'm in a, I'm in a different place now than I was at the beginning, because at the beginning it was tears. It was, yeah. you know, calling, you know, my people, other people who are actors and complaining and I was connected with an actress who was like that. And she was always complaining, always complaining, always complaining. And I saw my old self in that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was trying to help her, but some, sometimes, you, you know, you have to be willing to help yourself too, yeah. you know? And so now I know a lot of people are like, it's slow, you know, we're, we're not booking. It's slow for me too. You know what I'm saying? But I find other things to, um, to do. Like, for example, I'm doing audiobook narration now, which huh? growing up, I didn't like reading at all. Wow. <laughs> I, I've never really liked reading, but I love listening to an audiobook. Me too. And so, in between, my in between, I'm not disheartened because I'm not booking this and I'm not booking that because I keep myself busy um, with those other things. And even like, during the uh, shutdown, I was taking classes, taking classes. I had connected with you in Inner Circle. Um, and, you know, we talked about creating your own content. I created some content. Okay. You know, I connected with my actor friends. We even made a little group where we can talk to each other. So for people out there who um, aren't booking, I don't make, I don't put all my eggs in one basket with acting. Mm -hmm. And I don't set myself up to be disappointed. One thing that I learned from you is to, you know, I know that you say it with lines. Sometimes you got to throw the line away. Yeah. But when I finish with an audition, I throw that script away 
and I, I, I don't think about it. I'm not sitting here waiting on a call. I am going to the, what, what is it that I'm doing for myself? Maybe I need to take some classes, watch some instructional videos, learn something, grab my ukulele, which I love playing my ukulele, you know? So I, I just, I find other things for myself to do because there's so many other, there's so many other facets of acting, number one, but because I, I consider audiobook narration acting because mm-hmm. those are it stories is. that grab me the most, you know, when you're hearing the different voices and stuff. This, yeah, you hear a dry audiobook reader. <laughs> you're like, oh. Right. <laughs> right. So I, I, it's just finding those other, those other things that I love and I like and just keeping that artistic side of me, that, that fire still burning, whether I'm booking a gig or whether I am playing my ukulele or reading, um, you know, learning more about audiobooks. Like I threw myself into that. And now, you know, it, it, it's crazy because I, I, I booked a, um, a voiceover, for a national voiceover last week. And I also booked three audiobooks. You know wow. what I'm saying? So yeah. I, I got, I got a, two audiobooks for next month. I already have one lined up for May and I've got one on the horizon for June. So I have, I just keep, keep um fires going i keep that yeah. fire i don't let it go out because i'm not getting an acting job because getting an acting job or not getting an acting job does not define who i am come on say all that all it can do is add to me and and fuel my dream but it's not going to stop me or make me feel less about myself because i don't get a job because i know who i am i know i'm creative I know that I'm adding something to this world and there's so many things going around that I can be a part of. So that's what I do. I keep myself busy and keep myself somewhere grounded in the realm of creativity. I love that. And you're still, like you said, you're still working the muscle. Okay. It's just in a different way. Right. It's just in a different way. And congratulations. I love Thank to you. hear it. We got to diversify. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We got to diversify. <laughs> yes, I think after recording the audio book for my book, I was like, I don't think this life is for me. Um, well, it's challenging. Know, it is challenging. It's it's That's the thing now. It's not for everybody. And I realized right. that. It's just that I am so in love with audio books. And I, I still have to balance my time because I have a, a studio at my house. But I can't sit in that. There are some people who can sit in the studio for five to eight hours a day. Now, that is not me. I can give you a good two, three hours maybe <laughs> a day, but that that's it. But, you know, it you have to find, people have to find that thing that works for them. Like somebody asked me, why don't you teach a class? Because I, you know, I'm from, uh, my background is teaching. I'm like, well, that that's not what I want to do. Yeah. You know, that's, that's not for me right now. I'm not interested in doing that. <laughs> you know, so you just have to find what what it is that that you want to do and then put yourself into it and do it yeah yeah I love that you know and then kind of on the same vein before we wrap you know I just that was so juicy and I'm thinking just I want to encourage you all to think about what are some of the other things you can do that are still in a creative field that still get you to work the muscle um like Arisha said it's like you get to make a choice too do I just sit and focus on the things that I don't have and the things that are not coming, or do I find something else that brings me joy? You know, and it, it may not be acting related, might not be creative at all, but I think it's important for you to figure out that you have one or two choices, <laughs> you know? For the actor at home who is seasoned, perhaps been in the game for a while, maybe it's just gotten really quiet. It's been quiet for a while. And then there's the new actor, maybe they're just breaking, trying to break through, but feeling like, lost, confused. They don't know what they don't know. And they either way feeling like maybe I should, maybe this isn't for me. Maybe I'm just not good enough. Maybe I should just quit. I don't know. What do you have to say to that actor? What if you could just give them a virtual verbal hug? What can just share something to place in their heart? Um, I would say a couple of things. Number one, find a community of people that feed you. And what I mean by that is you can have so many people taking away from you, but when you have a community of people surrounding you that are pouring into you, that are saying, yes, you can do it, you can do it, that that will will move you along. So like if, if you're an actress, 
find a, a small, it can be a small, it can be three people. It can be the Hollywood bound actors group on Facebook, but find a community of people who are doing the same thing that you are. So that number one, you see that you're not alone and that other people are going through that. And you also have that system of encouragement. Mm -hmm. Number two, I want to say, don't, don't give up. And I know that that's cliche. I know that you, you know, people hear that all the time. But if this is something you really want, don't stop. Keep going. Take class. If you're right now, you're in a, in, a, in a space where you feel like you don't know what to do or what to do next. Take a class. Take an improv class. Um, take a commercial acting class. Take Christine's class because I learned so much from you. So I have to say that because I feel like I wouldn't be where I am now if I hadn't connected with you. So you have to make those connections. It's almost like like spirits know like spirits. Mm -hmm. And you'll know, you'll know that, yes, I need to connect with this person. Like, I knew that I needed to connect with you. Like I saw you talking about something and it almost made me cry. And I was like, I got to connect with this person because this person is so real. And there are people around you who, who may not be real. People around you aren't going to support you. So you have to find those people that are. And don't, don't give up. Don't give up because you think you're too old because you're not. You're just where you're supposed to be. Just keep working. Don't give up because you're new and you haven't booked anything yet and you've auditioned for a hundred roles. Get in a group because a lot of us have that same story. Listen to these stories, plug in, plug into the, the, the acting community that's near you and plug into those persons that are going to um, fuel you and, and encourage you to keep moving forward because yeah. that that's that's what kept me if i didn't have um the community of actors that i'm with hollywood bound actors my real sisters I, i'm not sure if i would have kept going because the days get days get hard you know what i'm saying you get to a place where you're like oh no i i, I can't do this but if you keep going and, and you keep arming yourself with knowledge putting knowledge in your toolbox mm -hmm. what i felt like i was like i don't know what i don't know what i need to do next but you know what i'm going to do i'm going to take some classes i'm going to read a book or really listen to a book <laughs> right so i am going to put put wood in my fire to keep it going i'm going to feed myself you know with knowledge and also take care of yourself if you're feel, feeling overwhelmed Take a break. Find something that you love to do and do that. And then when you're ready, go back, but just don't give up. Don't stop. Keep going. It is going to happen. There, uh, one of my great teachers would always say that imagine going to a beach and taking a bucket and trying to take all the sand off the beach. It's not possible because there's, there's, so much sand at that beach that teacher was christine horn <laughs> but there, there's so there's room at the table there are so many networks and streaming services out there there is a role for you yes and continue to get to know yourself and truly just love who you are and be okay with you and continue to move forward because it is going to happen it it's going to happen and I know that because it happened for me and I'm no different than you, you know, it's going to happen. Don't give up. Surround yourself with positivity, get in a great class and just surround yourself with supportive and people who are real. Surround yourself with them and, and you're, it's going to happen. It's, it's going to happen. happen. It's going to happen. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much, Arisha. That was so juicy. Thank you for that virtual verbal hug. That's what I'm gonna start calling it. I mean, <laughs> we all need to hear it. You're pouring into me as I'm listening. Like, That's right. That's right, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Arisha, I'm so excited for you. Don't worry, uh, viewers, you will get to get access to all of Arisha's links, find out all the things she's been in. You can catch up and binge. Um, 
you have seen her and you will continue to see her. Arisha, thank you so much for spending space and time with me. And thank you all for watching. Make sure if you missed any part of this Booking Magnet Magic series, come on and catch up because there's so much juiciness in this series. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.